Hey guys, welcome to the Kane Audio vlog. Uh, the big question that everybody's always asking is how much money do music producers make? So I got asked last week in my AMA session the question was along the lines of how much money, in fact I've got it here, if a producer was signed to let's say Mousetrap for an EP, how much can a producer expect to actually make these days uh, or is it more important for the support etc. I thought that was a really important question to ask and I think it's a really important answer that people need to know. First and foremost I'm not going to go into what figures people make because it's different for everyone. Uh, there are some artists, and using Mousetrap as the example, there are some artists who uh, make an absolute fortune in sales and whatever else. Uh, they sell big numbers, but there are also guys who don't make that at all. There are also people on the roster who make money indirectly from these things as well, and that's what I'll get into in a bit. Um, but the big question is, is how much can a music producer make? If you watch TV or YouTube or whatever, you're going to see a whole host of music producers. You know, we've all seen selfies in front of private jets and holidays on private yachts. And, you know, they're traveling the world and they're doing all these amazing exotic things. Um, we know that the 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 one percenters, those big top 10 hitters that hit the billboard charts with every release and whatever you know we know that they make a huge amount of money much like the rest of the world that one percent you know get get the biggest cut but for everybody else below that level i guess that's where the the, the question becomes more important and uh one thing i will also say is there are a lot of music producers out there who uh appear to be living the lifestyle of a traveling DJ, musician, producer, whatever, um, where in fact uh, a lot of them have a day job and quite often a, a well-paid day job, which is why they're able to travel around the world and do all these wonderful exotic things. It's not off the back of music money. Um, and I think that there's definitely nothing wrong with living that lifestyle and having that exotic life. If that's what you want, then great. But it's entirely different if you're trying to portray that that money has come from music when it hasn't. And I think that's where a lot of people are given false hopes in this industry. Um, that's not the case for the vast majority of music producers. Then factor in the whole Instagram, Facebook, culture that goes on in general uh, there's obviously a lot of people i'm sure you've all got friends on your facebook and instagram who are constantly or appear to be constantly posting photos of you know them living the high life doing amazing things and everything's brilliant um, and we all know in reality that's maybe not always the case and you know with all of these things you tend to you know that the, there's usually stuff going on in the background as well so moving on to the genuine music producer and the question of how much money you're able to make uh, c coming from the question of releasing an EP on Mousetrap for example well first of all you need to get there you need to get to the point where you're able to release an EP on a label for example Mousetrap um, and that takes more often than not it takes years of honing in your skills and craft to be able to get there um, and you, you know the whole process of networking and whatever you've got to get there but let's assume you get there now releasing one EP on Mousetrap is not you know if you've got a day job before that you're not going to be able to quit your day job just off the back of one EP it's not going to happen and truth be known I think the vast majority of producers that I know uh, really don't make much money at all from their music certainly not in sales and this is where it then gets a bit more complicated I suppose because uh, in royalties you have uh, master rights sales royalties and you've got publishing royalties as well so if for example your track gets played on the radio or on TV or synchronized to a film or something like that then clearly the royalties are much better and much bigger than you would expect to get from 
uh, sales and there's a few more guarantees in there as well so it gets a bit more complicated there so you definitely can make money from a release but it's not necessarily coming from fans and sales another option that's potentially available and again this is certainly uh, more realistic for the bigger labels because they carry that weight but things like spotify playlisting uh, tends to bring in a lot more streams and a lot more revenue so for example if you reach one of the main editorial playlists on spotify uh, you know you can be looking at say a million plays uh, is not out of this world and a million plays can bring in you know a few thousand pounds or dollars or whatever um, and you know I know a couple of bands for example um, who are sort of singer songwriter indie quirky bands um, they're in a fairly niche market they're certainly not top 10 sellers they've never entered the UK charts or anything of the sort um, but they've made a substantial living from Spotify playlisting um, now I've I've never really asked about this so I don't know if it's luck or judgment or management or planning or what but I do know that um, a few of their tracks have had around 30 million plays um, so you know you're looking at six figure numbers of money coming in then um, for each of those so you know potentially there is some serious money out there available to be had and obviously if you're releasing with a big record label then they tend to have a bit more clout for pushing towards those sorts of things and then finally the last thing i want to talk about which is probably the most important thing is the indirect money that i touched on at the very beginning of this video and this is probably where for me personally this is where i benefit from releasing with big record labels um, so my day job as it were as a music producer and composer I write a lot of music for other artists and companies as well for synchronization and TV music things like that I do a lot of library music um, I do all sorts like that and of course I do sound design as well for a lot of artists as well and engineering so things like mix sounds so uh, being an audio nerd I tend to have fingers in pies just because I love doing all of those things and I like to mix and match and, and have a different job to do each day. The benefit of me releasing with a big record label um, as an artist is the fact that indirectly I then get a lot more exposure and access to more fans or whoever. So off the back of my name being out there more, I tend to get a lot more work coming in. And this is vitally important for a lot of artists out there as well. So a lot of the full time music industry people, um, you know, they're DJing and they're producing. And so, you know, off the back of their releases, if they're getting some good success in terms of exposure from the back of a release, then they're putting that into place and then doing some tours or whatever off the back of that. And that's probably where they earn the real money. Um, so it's a it's a really important question it's one that I think um, you guys watching this are probably going to have more questions now uh, which is great and if that is the case then come and find me on my weekly AMA which I post every Friday on YouTube uh, other than that I just kind of wanted to get a little bit more clarity on to uh, where some of my money comes from and, and for certainly for a lot of other producers out there as well um, I think there's a lot of people that seem to be uh, a bit confused sometimes and there's definitely a lot of misconceptions out there as well. So hopefully this video has brought in a bit more clarity onto the situation. Uh, if it has, then give it a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, get involved and I'll see you soon. Cheers.